welcome to the Wild Gut Project. My name is Carrie. This channel is all about being vegan on a low FODMAP diet for IBS. And of course, one of the big parts of IBS is poo. So that's what this video is about. Um, so if you happen to be eating those chocolate protein balls from my last video, maybe just put them aside for a moment. I really wanted to make this video because poo, feces, defecation, it's something that's embarrassing to talk about and it's really important that you have a good kind of language to discuss it with your doctor, your dietitian, and also you have a system that you understand for monitoring your uh, symptoms over time with the foods you eat in your symptoms diary. Quick bit of poo trivia for you. Did you know 75% of your poo is actually water? The rest is a combination of dead and alive bacterial cells, your own cells, and then soluble and insoluble fiber that your body doesn't digest. Another fact, the average American actually excretes 150 grams of feces every day on average, and that equates to five times in their life. And obviously this is a vegan channel, so to compare that with cows, did you know just 2,500 cows will produce the same amount of manure as 411,000 people? But, and obviously that all runs off into rivers and nature and into the sea and causes lots of degradation of the environment and problems for humans and animals. Now I'm going to describe the perfect poo. So we all know what we're aiming for, and it's definitely something you can kind of forget after a few years of IVF. It should be solid and smooth, kind of log shape, about the diameter of your wrist. It should be a few inches long. It should be a chocolatey brown colour. Obviously the things you eat can very naturally and harmlessly change the colour of your poo. So if you eat lots of leafy greens, you can look a bit green. If you eat lots of beetroot, you can look a bit red. If you take iron supplements, it can make it very dark. Um, however, if you aren't expecting it to change colour, and it does, it can indicate something's going wrong, especially either redness or kind of dark black hues. It can mean you're having a GI bleed. In that case, it's absolutely essential you go to the hospital as soon as you can. I thought it was interesting to point out, it shouldn't actually really smell very bad at all. Usually if it does, it means you've got some kind of infection or obviously things aren't working the way they're meant to. It should also sink. For some reason, I always thought that the healthiest foods were the ones that were meant to float, but actually that's an occasion you've either got too much fat in your diet or you're not digesting the fat properly, so it should sink. Another thing worth mentioning is it's actually perfectly normal and healthy to recognise some of your meals in the poo. So things like carrots and corn and oats, which have a lot of insoluble fibre, like it's very healthy and normal for those to turn up fully intact, so don't worry about that. As long as it's not like all of it, it's fine. A random point, and it's something you can track, is it shouldn't actually require much wiping at all, if any. Like obviously you do to check in for like hygiene, but it should basically just be to check and not really have to clean anything up. And then very, very importantly, the experience should be quite easy. It should be very easy to come out. You should also, before, have a very kind of uh, clear signal from your body, like, time to go to the loo, you go, it's easy, and then you feel satisfied like, and you're done for, you know, until that urge comes again. Definitely some people with IBS or other kind of bowel problems, you can have a vague sense you need to go, you're not really sure, then maybe you go and it's not very easy, you spend a lot of time there, you should never have to strain. And then afterwards you can kind of feel um, like it's not really finished or it's incomplete and like that's not a good feeling so you should be satisfied. <laughs> Obviously that was lots of kind of qualitative information, no one's got time to write that out every single time they want to track a bowel movement in their symptoms diary. So I'm going to give you the tool used in hospitals, it's what uh, nurses use to track these with patients and it's the Bristol stool chart. People did actually spend some time looking at and categorising poo. Thank you to those researchers. So as you can see, it goes up from types one to seven. Four is your ideal saucer shape, smooth poo. And then kind of going towards one, it gets progressively dehydrated and kind of bitty. And that's kind of what happens when you're more constipated because the more time the feces spends in your intestines, more water is drawn out. 
And then heading away from four up to seven is when it starts to get more like diarrhea and it's watery and that's where it's moving in too quickly and maybe those food maps are drawing lots of water into your intestines and it's just got nothing to hold it in place. So in your symptoms diary you could put for example a number, say, say it was five, it's a pretty good day, um, put in a rough guide of how much, maybe you could put it in cups or milliliters if that makes sense to you and then you can also break it out of 10 for how satisfying it was and it just means that over time you have a very consistent number based system to draw comparisons so maybe when you're first starting you kind of you flip between two and three and maybe on average it's like a five for satisfying and it's never very much and then maybe after a few weeks your average kind of slowly increases towards four but you wouldn't have noticed otherwise because it's still not great. So it can be reassuring to see gradual improvement you might not be aware of or be able to compare otherwise. And of course it's also something very useful for your doctor to see because it's something they will understand. I hope that was useful and not too weird. I kind of thought it would be useful to talk about on here because this is an IBS channel and where else is anyone going to talk about it? Um, but yeah, if there's anything else you want me to make a video about on this topic or you have some useful kind of ways of tracking it, please like comment and tell me below. Um, yeah, otherwise I will see you next Sunday evening with a video. Bye!